Hello survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video and in this video we're going to be taking a first look at Gold Mythic Protector Aaron who is going to be a character going on to the Advanced Token Wheel so you'll be able to pick him up with your Advanced Tokens. This is of course the second Aaron that we've had get released in the Mythic Era. The other one was pretty much the OG. It was the green you know, strong character. I think it was the very first Mythic character I previewed when the Mythic Era came out. And now we have this um, alert version, which we have kind of had a little sneak peek of a couple of times. He is on the art on Eric, but he's also part of an avatar that was in a battle pass. So we kind of knew this guy was on the way. Visually, he looks really cool. He's giving me proper, like proper Luke Skywalker vibes. I'm not going to lie. Looks a lot like him um, with the cloak and everything like that. Looks really cool. On the left-hand side, we can see he's got like a more detailed pistol here. But he hasn't got an attached weapon. It is a default pistol by the looks of things. If we look at his stats, at level 1,440, limit break 3. He has got 13,369 attack, 31,457 defense, and 33,815 HP. He is an alert character holding that pistol, of course. Going to be tank roll. Of course is going to be mythic and he's going to be joining the alexandria allegiance so potentially could have some usage either on faction assault or potentially in future teams who knows with eric because he is also part of that allegiance as well but we'll have to wait and see if there are any characters that come out that bring along some alexandria synergy with them um, but for now we're going to look at aaron's adrenaline rush and it is called your pain is mine it is a, got a recharge rate of 55 ap this character and a teammate get pain split for three turns they heal 40 percent of their max hp for three turns and then while batting on the defense team aaron will deal 30 percent of his max hp as main damage to an enemy so obviously three different things going on here first up is the pain split and the way that works is it will link with the person with the highest HP and then it will heal that person for 40% of their max HP. And also by the wording, it looks like it will heal Aaron as well for 40% of his max HP for three turns for both of those heals. And then lastly, the, the damage is going to be pretty decent because you're going to be able to get Aaron's HP up to 80 to 100k without too much of a problem. So it should be able to do between you know 25 and 30,000 damage without too much of an issue now i will say in the rest of aaron's kit he has got something in there that'll boost his hp a little bit more and this is based on his max hp so even if he's had some damage dealt to him his damage will be quite consistent i think the only thing that could potentially reduce this output of damage is if aaron himself gets maimed that's the only thing that could potentially do it okay so here we are attacking and you can see we have got some very high hp characters on a defense team What's going to happen is Aaron's going to do his Adrenaline Rush and he should do the Pain Split link with someone like Peacekeeper. But if you did have someone like Noor as the highest HP character and she wasn't normalized, then she would obviously get the bonus from that heal that she'd get off of Aaron as a proc on her specialist skill. So you can definitely team up Aaron with some particular characters to get some nice little, uh, nice little procs going on here. If we hit the Defend action... You'll see the rush will come out. He'll do a bit of maim damage. 30% of his max HP. That'll be boosted based on the HP that he gets from the leader skill, weapon, you know, passives, so on and so forth, mods. So you can boost this massively. Now, if you look at the link, you can see it's linked up with Peacekeeper. Now, people sometimes ask me, what does the color of the pain split mean? Because right now it's green. It doesn't signify anything except so you can easily identify who's linked. Because you could potentially have another character doing pain split with someone else. And then at least when you're attacking that team, I know that the green link is between Aaron and Peacekeeper. And let's say if it has a pink link, it could be between someone like Noor and another character that has pain split. So I know which characters are linked together. It's pretty much as simple as that. Now you might have noticed that both characters, Peacekeeper and Aaron, did get a 40% heal. And of course this stacks on top of any other turn heals they actually get teamed up with Noor, she does the 50 percent procs every now and again and it would obviously just stack on top so they both had 90 percent in that case if we look at the upgrades on the adrenaline rush you can see a grade two it gets an upgrade while batting on a defense team deal 15 percent of this character's max hp as main damage 
At grade four, it gets plus one pain split duration and heal changes to two turn duration. And that would go from a one turn pain split up to a two turn pain split. And then you can see at limit break one, it gets plus one to pain split and heal duration again. And then it obviously would go from um, two turns on both to three turns on both. So that's actually pretty decent. And then at limit break three, it gets the extra plus 15% main damage. Now, I will say, just looking at the upgrades here, LB1 is what you want to probably aim for just purely on this character being a bit more of a tank and being, uh, you know, a bit more of a frustration. But if you want this character to deal, obviously deal more damage, LB3 would be the way to go. You can obviously be quite consistent in that amount of damage output. Most damage dealers have between 20 and 25,000 uh, max HP. Main bypass is bonus HP. So you know that as long as you're doing between 20 and 25,000 main damage, which is generally going to happen because Aaron's going to have much higher HP than that, he's going to be one-shotting a lot of these damage dealers when he does his Adrenaline Rush. So overall, I think this Adrenaline Rush is pretty good. It's going to be doing a number of different things. Pain Split is not heavily used at the moment, and you know there are some times when Pain Split can be a negative. As long as the, all the characters on the defense team are heavily defensive and heavily stacked up, on the defense you're never going to have any issues with one character getting destroyed and also killing the character that they're linked to it only is an issue if you like put an offensive character who has very low defense and very low hp on defense team they could potentially get nuked if they're like the last character alive with aaron and then aaron would also be taken out but on the defense teams that we see these days there's no real weak link when it comes to the hp and defense numbers everyone's tanky and Aaron's going to be working fine with those characters. Now next up we'll take a look at Protector Aaron's signature move. And it is called Priority Target. It has an initial cooldown of turn 1. And it also has a pretty quick cooldown of 1 turn. Number of uses being unlimited. Deal 5% of the enemy team's total attack stat as main damage to an enemy. While battling on the defense team. All other teammates get camouflage for two turns. This is actually really, really interesting. We've kind of seen some cool stuff like this in the past with Eric, in fact. I think he was dealing the max HP of his entire team as main damage or as damage on his rush. This is the total attack stat of the enemy team that he's going to deal as main damage. So let's say you've got five characters and you have a total of 500,000 attack stat which isn't too hard to come by you might have like three characters who are damage dealers who have 100 to 140,000 attack you might have a support character or two but it'll come to around 450 to 500,000 a lot of the time as a minimum you're going to be taking 25,000 main damage from 500% total attack stat on your attack team and that is enough to take out a damage roll character like I said it bypasses bonus hp that is going to be very very problematic also camouflage will counter a lot of different things anyone who has multi-attack nukes is obviously going to counter those characters like sophia who have line rushes obviously going to have issues you're going to have to try and get ahead of this or have a good setup for stealing away camouflage otherwise you're going to be having to basically deal with single targets constantly and that will massively drag out your fight Okay, so we're going to attack here, and I've tried to get the total attack stat up to what would roughly be around on a lot of uh, attack teams used by people. This is an unmodded team, but it has around about 475,000 total attack as a full team. I also have got Aaron on the defense team. He's got a lot of lower level teammates. This is to just make it less cluttered, so you don't have to see loads of buffs going off from uh, mythic characters. Just so you can see what's going on a bit easier. I'll hit the defend action on Titan. Signature move will come out from Aaron and it will do 23,000 main damage. This is, of course, 5% of the attack teams, my team's total attack stat. So obviously, it's dictated by whatever I take in. Then you can see all the teammates of Aaron have got camouflage for two turns. This is going to stop things like um, Sophia's adrenaline rush if I was to target the top line. It would only hit the character I selected. Like I said, it's going to drastically slow down things because it's going to be single target pretty much from then on in the fight. It's also worth noting that if your attack team would have any attack buffs when his signature move goes off, 
then he would be obviously buffed effectively because they've got more attack in that. As long as it was actually occurring at the beginning of the attack team's next turn and it was still occurring, for instance, a two-turn buff. If it's a one-turn buff, I think it runs out at the end of their turn. Just worth noting that. Now, if we look at the upgrades on the signature move, you can see at grade three, it gets an upgrade. While battling on the defense team, all other teammates get camouflage for two turns. At grade five, it gets minus one to starting cooldown. So it goes from a two-turn starting cooldown down to a one-turn starting cooldown. And at limit break two, it gets minus one to cooldown. So it goes from a two-turn cooldown down to a one turn cooldown the actual turnaround on this guy's adrenaline rush and signature move is actually pretty quick in the first four turns he should be doing his signature move twice and his adrenaline rush once that's a lot of main damage and a lot of support for his team as well camouflage is really really good and it's going to slow down attack teams coming up against aaron it isn't specific to any trait or anything like that so it'll work on any team that aaron is on regardless of where he's positioned or who he's teamed up with. I think this signature move is really, really interesting. I love the fact that they're obviously introducing new kinds of damage stuff when it comes to the total attack stat is very interesting. This means you can obviously get destroyed if you're trying to take in a massive percentage team, but you can see Aaron on a defense team and try and come up with like counter ideas. This is hopefully gonna make attacking teams obviously gonna be specific to what characters are on that team. A one attack team versus all is going to be less effective in this case, especially if that one attack team is percentage damage. Now, before we move on to Protector Aaron's mythic abilities, we are going to be doing a giveaway because Aaron is an advanced mythic character. We're going to be giving away advanced mythic tokens. It'll be 10,000 for the winner, 5,000 to two runners up. All you have to do to enter is type down in the comments the word protector this will enter you into the giveaway obviously this is protector aaron you can make it part of a interesting little catchphrase some people come up with some pretty cool stuff i do love reading them best of luck if you enter though guys we're going to get back to the passes now and here are those passives you can see these are the mythic abilities of aaron he is a tank role character so he is going to get strength as a passive, 40% critical hit resistance. And next up, he has got punished. When this character receives a debilitating status effect, 100% chance a random enemy gets minus 50% attack for two turns. This will be for each debilitating status effect that lands on this character. So you have RNG debilitating status effects or someone who actually does multiple, then he'll debuff multiple people. And the next one is going to be bigger counter. 50% counter damage boost. That's obviously going to be great with his specialist skill, making the counter damage even higher than it was before if it needed it in the first place because the amount of damage output from this is generally crazy as it is. And the next one is going to boost certain parts of his kit because obviously his HP and his rush is going to dictate how much main damage he does and now it's going to be buffed. Pro training, all control role teammates get 20% defense all tank roll teammates get 20% max HP. Aaron is a tank roll character and it will affect him as well. This actually counts as a separate source of stat. So it will actually multiply with the weapon, leader skill and other passives as well. So for instance, if we look at this team right here, you can check out the stats of these characters. We have got one tank and one control character. The tank will get HP boosted by Aaron and the control character will get the defense boosted. If I put Aaron in the team, you can see there's going to be a 20% boost to both of those characters. And of course, Aaron himself, you can see he's getting a boost up to 56,000 HP, much higher than the 20% initial boost because of the leader skill from Rick. He's not even holding a weapon at this point and get those stats much higher. Now, if I add another character that has passive stat boosts, like Andre, you can see Eric's defense went up furthermore and is now at 53,000. If I was to remove Aaron from the team, you'd see it go down because obviously they stack together. But initially, when it's just Aaron in the team, it was going to be giving 6,000 of a boost, 20,000 to the 30,000. You can see now it's giving enhanced 
boost because they stack together and multiply with each other. So having multiple stat boosts of the same type obviously is good. It works with leader skills, it works with weapons, it also works with passives and now multiple passives in some cases. Now I've attacked with a leader in Dario that obviously has a passive that does three control to a character. This is just to show you if you do three separate controls, you're going to get three of your teammates with minus 50% attack. It doesn't matter how many controls you do, it's going to just keep adding them onto your team. You better be careful. Basically, if I was to do another one, one of my other characters should get minus 50% attack. And it looks like it went to, um, to him himself. And I don't think I've got another one here. I think there's a lot of control on him right now. But you can see basically how it'll work when it comes to doing um, the minus 50% attack when receiving a debilitating status effect. Now, if we look at the upgrades on these passives, you can see he gets the first half of Punished at grade one. And that's going to be 50% chance a random enemy gets minus 50% attack when he gets a debilitating status effect. At grade two, he gets the first half of Strength giving him 20% critical hit resistance. At grade three, he gets the second half of Punished, making it a 100% chance. A random enemy gets minus 50% attack when he gets a debilitating status effect. At grade four, he gets plus 20% to counter damage boost. At grade five, he gets the buff where all control roll teammates get 10% defense and all tank roll teammates get 10% max HP. These are all gonna be boosted into the limit breaks. Strength's going to go up to 40% crit resistance at Limit Break 1. Limit Break 2 is going to make that counter damage boost go up to plus 50% total. And at LB3, you'll have those buffs on control characters going up to 20% defense and tank roll characters going up to 20% HP. I honestly love characters that give stat boosts because they're very consistent. And now the fact that they're going to obviously stack together in some cases you're going to be able to get some really nice combos together, especially with particular characters. Eric team up with Aaron seems to be decent just because of this passive. Also, Eric's going to generally have quite high HP as well, and that is also going to work with the pain split on Aaron's Adrenaline Rush. So overall, I think Aaron's passives are quite nice. They're pretty straightforward. The stat boosts, obviously, I think a lot of people like those on passives. The boost to the counter damage is going to be interesting, but this potentially will just mean you're even less likely to survive against counter damage with things like bonus HP. And you'll be able to get through teams that have much higher health pools. So obviously Aaron is a payback specialist and I'll just read through it. If this character were to take more than 30% of their max HP in a single rush, active or signature skill, and deal that same damage back to the attacker and up to two additional enemies. Now, initially, it would obviously do 100% reflect on that 30% of the max HP. So if you were to hit him for 40,000, he would reflect back 40,000 to the person who does the damage plus two extras. But now he does an extra 50% damage on top of that. So it'll go from 40,000 in this case up to 60,000. So it's just obviously going to have much better chance of getting through characters with bonus HP or potentially characters that have reduced counter damage on their kit this is going to still increase it a little bit more so it's got more chance of taking those characters down as well just to quickly test this out we have got thanksgiving sophia on the attack team i'm going to use my signature move i think it does around about let's see 25k damage or something 26k and instead of having 26,000 reflected back off the off the counter damage we are actually going to get 40,000 from the counter damage makes quite a big difference honestly now, as I showed before, Aaron does have a default weapon, so you can obviously put whatever weapon you want in his hands. Whether his pistol and his art is ever going to be made available in the future, we'll have to wait and see. I don't think it's come out. I'm pretty sure we had Eric's in the previous battle pass when we had Aaron in there on the actual avatar. So maybe this is going to be a future battle pass weapon. Like I said, we'll have to wait and see whether it will work with Aaron or not is anyone's guess. But I think the majority of people have a focused stun weapon that they could just simply put in Aaron's hands for the time being. Whether anything nice and specialist comes out for Aaron in the future, we'll have to wait and see. So that was a first look at Gold Mythic Protector Aaron. And he is going to be a character, like I said, joining the game in the advanced token will. If you want to get pick up this character, you have two weeks to do so until he's gone and then he'll return in well a number of months he seems to potentially have pretty good synergy 
with Casanova Davy teams on the team ups. Obviously, Casanova Davy is alert and fast. Aaron here is alert. We've had some fast characters recently. I think we're pretty clear on the kind of team that we're potentially going to be seeing in the future. Do tell me your thoughts, though, on Protector Aaron here as an advanced wheel character. Best of luck if you enter the giveaway. That is the end of my video. I want to thank you very much for tuning in. And as always, keep on surviving, guys. Keep on surviving.